it's that time again, everyone. It's hot. There's a car that needs to be fixed. Well, a truck. And what we're going to be doing today is replacing the spark plugs on a 2002 Ford F-150 5.4 liter engine V8 Triton engine. And you know what they say. Those things are a son of a... Son of a bitch! Yeah, what he said. Some of the first things you want to do, you want to get your area prepared. And I have my surgery table for the operation. I have my ratchets, sockets, screwdrivers, hammer, WD-40, rust and corrosion protection, and miscellaneous goodies right there. It's not about how hard the job is. It's about the tools you have to do the job and the patience. Oh, and I also have more tools. I finally got portable impact. That means if I can't get the, the bolts off manually, I have, I have an impact gun. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put high mileage sea foam into the truck and we're going to take it around a couple of blocks and it's going to clean the particulates out and it's also going to heat up the engine to where just maybe with the hope a wing and a prayer that the spark plugs will not break off down inside the engine and give us a bad day which these are known to do that these are known for it go ahead google it and you'll see that these triton engines are a pain but we're going to give it a shot we're going to try it just because something is hard we don't give up we run right toward it and we get it done okay another thing that you want to do before you start working on in the truck is i'll admit right now guys I'm not six foot five, so I don't have enough clearance to reach into the truck at all times. So you might want to get you a ladder. And if you can't afford a ladder, there are these right here, some cylinder bricks. Look, six foot five. Look at my reach. It greatly improves your reach if you can't afford a ladder. So you're going to need to be able to do that. I have seen people let the air out of the tires and they got a good laugh, but this is the way I suggest. Get you a ladder or some cylinder blocks and then you'll be able to reach up inside of the truck. The first thing you want to do before you start on the truck is to spray it out with compressed air. This is an air compressor. I have it set to 150 pounds per square inch. And I have a connector on the end that's going to spray all over the engine. When you take the boots out, you want to spray down in there before you take the spark plugs out like this. And then you will clean any remaining particulates out of the spark plug wells. You want to make sure there's no dirt that's going to get down inside of the engine. Before you take out the spark plugs, you want to spray in some lubricating compound down in the spark uh, plug well and that way um, I'd give it about 20 minutes let it soak in and then be taking the boots off the other and that way once it's soaking in it'll have less of a chance to break off you want to do this step on every spark plug that you take out I'm going to start on the right side, the driver's side, of taking off the spark plugs. And I'm going to take off this plastic shroud, this breather snorkel, and this metal piece down here. We're going to need a ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket.
Now you're not gonna to wanna to lose these bolts. You wanna lay them right there. And there's just one on this side. Okay, then there are two on this side of the shroud. And they're also 10 millimeters. And once you break them loose, it's, it's faster if you just twist them off with by hand. Put it up there. Put that one up there. Then the shield should come off and I'm going to lay it down. Now we're going to take this breather snorkel off. You'll want to unplug this airflow sensor, mass airflow sensor it's right here. You want to take the clip, push it in and just pull it off. There's a screw over here that I'm going to be taking off. I'm going to be put I'm going to be putting an extension on there and this clamp it needs to be loosened up off of the intake here this is the intake and it is eight millimeters I'm gonna take disconnect this plastic hose just gonna pull that back out of the way and the plastic hose right under it. That is two of them. And I'm just gonna push them up here out of the way. And I'm gonna pull that back. And this should just pull that up and pull it out of there. And as you can see, bottom of this, and right here is where you're going to have to unplug it. There's a plastic piece here. You just, this plastic piece right here, you just push it in and pull. And it unplugs just like that right there. You don't want to lose this ring either. So I'm going to lay this over here to the side. You're gonna take this bracket off, but it also goes into where the thermostat goes, this hose here. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to put it back. And I'm taking this metal bracket here off so that I can get access to the spark plug boots or the ignition coils underneath here. I'm gonna be doing this job without taking the fuel rails off. And that is no small task in these trucks. This is my first attempt, so I'm not a professional at it. So I'm gonna try to get this to work. So there's three screws here that connects this metal bracket and you're going to want to take them off. There's number two. And then there's number three. Take this metal bracket off. That's what it looks like when it's off. Now I'm gonna be unplugging the cords, the plugs. I'm gonna be unplugging the plugs that go to 
the uh, spark plugs. They have clips and they just unplug just like that. And then you'll have a clip like this where there's a clip on both sides. You just squeeze that in and pull back. I'm going to be doing that as I take these off. There's the first two. And then I'm going to put the wiring harnesses back out of the way that have these ignition coils, these boots held in. They are seven millimeter. Yeah, I'm going to be getting the first one off of here. This is a about a eight inch extension with a seven millimeter socket. If you can hear that, that's the little bolt coming off of there. Then I'm gonna take the ratchet off because it's feeling loose enough where I can just move by hand and take that bolt out just like that. And I'm gonna put it up there. And then what you do, you just take this little boot and you wiggle it back and forth slightly and you pull it on up out of there. And then you have the boot out of there and we're gonna lay that to the side. And now down inside this hole right here is gonna be the spark plug. And that is where I'm gonna get the 5.8 spark plug socket and get that out of there. I have a like six inch extension with the socket on there. I'm gonna put that down in there. And then I have another two inch extension and this is so that I can clear the engine and I'll be able to turn the ratchet. So far, I've only had to use extensions, but as we go farther back, I haven't done this job before. We might need to use swivel heads or who knows yet, but so far, so good. That was in there pretty tight and I'm going slowly because these are known to break the ceramics on these in these engines not like a regular car these are known more than regular cars to break off and then we would have to get a kit to kind of bore out that uh old spark plug and that would be a mess Okay, so here comes spark plug number one. So there's spark plug number one. Doesn't look too bad, but definitely needs to be changed. A lot of people don't show exactly what they're going to do when they take these spark plugs out. I've already taken the first one out. And I'm going to show you guys up close what I'm, how I'm going to take these out. And I realize that there's about 10 different ways to do this, but I'm going to do it this way. And hopefully this helps somebody in the end. Okay, today guys, for the very first time, we're going to be using a new tool that I got. It's called a bore scope. Some people call it an endo or an endoscope and it's actually this long wire it's this long wire right here and it's usb powered and it also has this switch right here this wheel that you can turn it up or turn it down and that will adjust the brightness at the end of this tiny little camera accordingly and it is waterproof some people use it for plumbing but i'm going to be using it today to look inside of the spark plug wells inside of this truck now i'm going to be plugging it into my computer's usb port and if you're using windows 10 for this specific one it will automatically find it and i'm using a free piece of software called Simulus Vision. 
as you can see, this camera, as I put my hand in front of it, it's working. This uh, little in endoscope camera. And as you can see, the light on the end, I can adjust it brighter or uh, dimmer. I don't need it all the way bright, or I could get a flare on the image. This cord is 16 feet long, so it's plenty long enough to reach over here to the truck. And I'm going to be taking a look inside of these spark plug wells. As I'm looking with the borescope camera, I'm looking down into the spark plug wells and I'm really looking close to see if I can see any leaks like if there's an o-ring leak or what kind of debris are down inside of the spark plug wells and I'm also checking to see if any of the threads are cross threaded or if there's any other kind of particulates or objects that's inside of the spark plug wells you want to make sure that when you reinstall these spark plugs that there is nothing that is going to be in the way once you start installing them into the spark plug wells and that the threads are going to go in and match up nicely so that is why I'm using this bore scope you don't have to use one but it is nice to have one and that's exactly why and then if you need to repair a spark plug well then it comes in really handy and is a very useful tool. I'll be showing you where you can buy one of these little handy cameras in the video description box because this really can come in handy. Next step I'm going to do is you see these two rubber hoses here. I'm going to put some tape on those hoses and label it like left and right. And I'm also going to unplug this right here. And then this will give me even more access to right down through there and to back in here. And for beginners, I'm just going to label this. I'm going to put a <clears throat> I'm going to put an L on here, which means it goes on the left side. And then I'm going to unhook it. And then I'm going to get this out of the way. Set it over here. And then I'm going to take this hose. And I'm going to label it with an R. right and then I'm gonna put it up under here put it over there out of the way then I'm gonna unplug this connector just pulls back like that and I'm gonna get that out of the way and this gives me more room in here to access the ignition coils and to get to the spark plugs so then i'm going to unplug the electrical connectors to the spark plugs again they just come out like the other ones and remember these are seven millimeters I have a smaller ratchet, the seven millimeter socket. The extension I'm using is about eight to nine inches, enough to have a clearance. And once I get it so far, I take the ratchet off and I get this out by hand usually. And there is the bolt and I'll just lay that up there and then you go to the boot 
and you wiggle it a little bit and pull it up. And this one has oil, so I'm gonna be checking out the spark plug wells and seeing the condition of that. So that is the second cylinder back on the driver's side. As you can see with the second cylinder back, I have a six inch extension with a two inch extension with a five eight spark plug ratchet. And I'm putting it down inside, beside the fuel rail and it's in there. And I'm gonna have to do this gently. Hopefully it's coming out okay. I don't know if it's slipped off the case or if the spark plug is coming out. Hopefully the spark plug is coming out. These are known to slip off or break. The porcelain is known to break. It feels like it's loose. So I'm gonna take the ratchet off and I'm gonna turn this by hand Feels a little sloppy in there, so I'm a little worried. Guys, it's not good. There's a lot of oil on that uh, spark plug. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to look down in there and see why there's that much oil on the spark plug. Anyways, that is the second one and I'm going to be working on the third one. Okay, one of the contraptions I'm going to try because I'm having a lot of hard time with tools fitting down there is a seven millimeter socket with a bit that usually fits in a screwdriver. I'm going to put the bit on the seven millimeter socket and then this is a tool that has, it's 12 sided and it's one fourth is the size of it and it will fit in that bit. And it goes like this. We're gonna see if that'll fit because of the low clearance in here. Let's see if that'll fit on there. It's on there pretty good. There, I broke it loose. Okay, I'm holding the plastic down where my finger is and I'm letting this clear it. And it's moving the seven millimeter bolt from the ignition coil. It's a little slow process, but it's working. And this is the way I'm doing it. You might have another swivel head, type of swivel head tool that can clear this. If that's what you have, I recommend you using it. Like I said, you'll have to hold right here. There's a little plastic tab that you'll have to hold down with your finger. Don't break it, just hold it down so that you may have a little more clearance with your tool like I'm doing. And it's a slow process, but it will work. Once you have used the tool to loosen up the bolt to where you can get it out with your hands, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna reach under here and get the bolt the rest of the way out with my hand. Okay, it is loose. Right there is the bolt to the third cylinder that I just got out. Looks like it hasn't been changed in a very long time. I'll put that up there. And then I'm just gonna wiggle the boot a little bit, pull it on out and 
Here's what the boot looks like. Count one, two, and then there's three where the flashlight is. So I gave some light back here. There's a third spark plug well, and that is what I'm gonna be getting the third spark plug out with. It was a pain, but I, I just kept persistent. I kept at it and I got the boot out. Now it's time to get the spark plug out. The tool you wanna to use to get out the spark plugs, since they're underneath the fuel uh, rails, is one of these swivel heads and attach it to a 5.8 spark plug socket. And that way it can bend in any way it needs to and it'll still be on your ratchet. Have a swivel headed extension with a 5.8. And it comes out just like that. And that is number three on the driver's side. Last but not least is number four. And it's located all the way back as you follow the fuel rail. There's the EGR uh, tube and toward the very back. And what I'm gonna use here as a smaller extension and come down in between these two metal pipes here uh, probably about a three inch extension with a smaller ratchet and that should take care of it. This is about a three inch extension with a seven millimeter and I'm taking this small ratchet right here and I'm going to go down between, you guys can see in the middle right there, right where the extension and the socket is I have it connected to the last ignition coil and then I'm gonna put the small socket on the top and then I'm gonna get that last seven millimeter bolt out of there on spark plug number four on the driver's side. Connecting the ratchet now and you might not have as good lighting because you really have to feel back here. And you're not gonna have a lot of clearance to move the ratchet back and forth. So you'll have to do it kind of slowly and persistently. About a half of a crank each time is what kind of clearance I have in here. See it comes forward and I crank it about halfway and just goes back and forth. You just gotta keep doing that. I'm doing about a half of a turn each time. Uh, once it's loosened up enough, you can just take your fingers over the extension And if you don't have a magnetic one, you can just reach back here. Okay, you got the bolt. As you can see, that's the fourth. That is the fourth and final bolt. Number four on the driver's side. And then I'm gonna get the boot. You lean it over to the right just a little bit and pull up. Wiggle it a little bit if you have to. And here it is that one number four there's number four on the driver's side what i'm doing now is i'm taking the five eighths and swivel extension i'm putting it down into the spark plug well and i'm making sure it's attached it's right there it's on number four looks like it has a good clearance And I want to do this easily, just like the others. I 
don't want it to break off. That's that's a nightmare. So far, it feels like it's feels like it's coming out okay. See, it is down in the fourth socket cylinder right there, all the way down in there under the fuel rail, and I'm using the swivel, and it's coming out. Hopefully, a spark plug will come out, and not a part of one or nothing at all. And here it looks like number four has came out. There's number four on the driver's side. And then that's how you get those out. You can see I have not removed the fuel rail at all. And I got access to these spark plugs. Like I said, it was a son of a, but I got it. Okay, I wanna take this fourth final one. There's number four out of the engine and then i'm gonna lay them over here okay step one you can see this is where the oil cap is it takes 5w20 but anyways you want to disconnect these connectors you just uh push them in and then i'm going to disconnect them on these boots here under these boots is where the spark plugs are see this is the boot this is the fuel rail and we're gonna un unplug these also and pull it back and see that's unplugged so it looks like it's gonna take a seven millimeter socket and I'm using a different ratchet Yes, seven millimeter guys. I suspect we're gonna need a lot of extensions on this job because of the fuel rails. A lot of people take off the fuel rails during this job and I'm gonna try to do it without taking off the fuel rails. And I'm doing the passenger side and it's gonna be a lot easier than the driver's side because on the driver's side, the spark plugs are located underneath. Now, if I haven't mentioned before, I blow compressed air all through here. And what that does, it stops or it helps prevent dust and other dirt and particulates from getting down inside the engine. So you kind of want to clean and spray it down with compressed air first. So I've got an extension, a seven millimeter deep well. And since the bolt is loose, I'm just going to use that, pull it on up out of there. And then I'm gonna put these bolts in a safe place so I don't lose them. Let's go up here. You see? And then you go ahead and you kind of wiggle back and forth with this boot. This is what connects to the spark plug down inside the spark plug well. Down in here. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the rest of the spark plugs and the boots. <clears throat> There's a plastic tab in the back. And this one, here's the boot. Came out of there. And uh, 
there's the other connector and I'm going to put these wires back out of the way because I'm going to need room in here to work with uh, removing the spark plugs themselves I'm going to go ahead and get the first spark plug out now what you'll need is a spark plug socket remover we have a 5 8 spark plug wrench we're gonna get it to go down into the hole then I'm gonna put the ratchet on and then I'm going to easily start getting the spark plug out of there. I'm going to try to be careful because I don't want it to break off. We've done the sea foam and heated up the truck because I've read online it being just a little bit hotter not super hot but just a little bit it's more likely that the threads will give and come out of there instead of the porcelain on the spark plugs breaking and that's what i'm hoping for right now and it feels like it's loosening up and it's coming out let me see if it's loose enough for me to move it without the ratchet okay I'm turning it and got the first spark plug here's the first spark plug uh, that is out and it didn't break so now we're going into the second hole and it goes down in fine in that one also. Okay, what I have done is down inside here, there's a rubber gasket uh, that pulls out, grabs a hold of the spark plug and pulls it out. I made sure I used some glue to make sure that gasket stays in place because without it, it's not gonna pull up that spark plug. So, I'm ready to start on the second spark plug. Going down in the, the hole. And uh, there's gonna be four on each side because this is an eight cylinder engine. I'm going to try to do it easy and I'm going to try to do it in a way that I don't have to remove the fuel rails. Now like I said this side is going to be a lot easier than the driver's side because the fuel rails aren't directly over the spark plugs like they are on the other side. So as long as none of these breaks on the threads, then we're good to go on this side here. And it feels like they're coming out fairly easy. This will be the second one. Now I'm just uh, taking it out the rest of the way with my uh, hand. I'm just on tighten it. See if we pull the spark plug up and out of there, you can see all kinds of corrosion. You can see all kinds of corrosion on this one. Uh, dirt, corrosion, it hasn't been changed in a long time. This bad whammer jammer definitely needs to be changed. What I'm trying to do is get you guys a really good view here of 
how this goes pretty far back under to the engine. This is cylinder, the, the third one back, and then there's one all the way back here. So let me get that seven millimeter, and then I'm gonna take the ratchet with the seven millimeter, and I'm gonna loosen it up. Okay, here's the bolt. Here, the boot is gonna come out. That's definitely a problem, guys. Look at that. And look at that boot. Uh, there's a spring that connects the boot to the spark plug. And that's how it fires the cylinder and it's completely busted. And there's oil all over it. So I'm gonna have to definitely fix this. That was a problem we were not expecting, but I can always order another boot or go pick one up at the local auto shop, AutoZone, Advance, O'Reilly's. I'm gonna see if I can use this same one down inside of here, and I can. But on the third one back, it barely fits, barely. There is this rubber hose right here that you can see, and I'm just gonna pull it off of there so that I can get back in here I'm gonna move this to the side and I'm gonna get back in there with my ratchet. So that I can get this uh, spark plug out of there. And again, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna use too much force because I don't wanna break the porcelain. Because if these break off, you have to get this special kit to bore these out of here and it's no fun and I'm not wanting to do that it seems to be coming out no problem and remember when you're doing this just have patience Take your time and get it done right. Okay, it feels like it's loose enough where I might be able to turn it by hand and pull it up out of there. Okay. Let me see if it's come up out of there number three and it looks like looks like it's coming up out of there guys of course I expect the harder ones like these to not have been replaced in a long time looks like it's in pretty bad shape Good. okay guys if I run into a problem then you may too. And I ran into a problem and I'm gonna show you what it is. And you may run into it too, it's no big deal. Okay, as I was taking out an old spark plug, I saw this over top of the spark plug. See, it, it screws in just like this. Well, if you get a spark plug out of there that looks like this and it's bigger, then you need to pay attention and you need to take this sleeve off of this spark plug. And I've already taken it off of the spark plug and I have cleaned it. What this does is someone has already cross threaded or for some reason or another, they've stripped the 
spark plug well out where it threads down in and they have bought another kit i can even give you a link to it in case it happens to you but they have re-threaded where the spark plug goes and it is bigger now than the original spark plug so it needs this size of thread so when you put another spark plug in you'll need to take the sleeve off and put it over the new spark plug and then you put that spark plug down in the hole that's been re-threaded so if you see any sleeves on your old spark plugs be sure to take them off so far i've only found it on one but i ran into this and i wanted you guys to be aware of it that if you see it uh, if it happens to you you'll know exactly what to do okay i'm still on the passenger side i have to get back here if you can see where my finger is barely see it back here is where that last spark plug is it's going to be a real trick but i'm going to go underneath these hoses right here if you see these hoses i'm going to be pulling them up and going underneath of them if you guys can see at the end with my small extension i am unscrewing the screw in the back and it's about ready to come out looks like i got it and that's to the very back one now let me tell you it's going to look a lot easier in the video but it takes a lot of patience and persistence to keep getting that out okay guys just don't give up and then i'm going to lift the boot off <laughs> You want to make sure it's unplugged from the ignition coil and then you pull out your fourth boot from the very back you put the, the socket in first and the regular sized extension feels like I can get that out by hand and that's what I'm doing you want to turn it to the left pull it up out of there that's what I'm doing the space is a little tight back there but voila oh, that's the fourth and final one on the passenger side you can see it does looks like it has oil on that so we're gonna to have to check that out so there is the fourth and final one to come out of the passenger side see it looks like grit and oil and I'm gonna to have to check down inside that spark plug well before I put these back together and I'm gonna order some uh, ignition coils or spark plug boots and then i will finish this side of the job i hope that you have enjoyed the video and i hope that it helps if you like these kinds of videos please consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to smash the like button also leave a comment in the comment section below tell me what you think until next time, have a good day.